All right, in this lesson, our goal is to recreate, or create from scratch, a mug. So we're gonna be making a cup with a handle. Here's an example of one that we made in class today. So this is just a review for those of you who weren't here or maybe uh, got lost in the steps. We're going to go through this together again. So we're gonna start with creating a new document. Call this mug. 2.0 for me okay and as always we're going to be working in millimeters so if you need to check your units you can click here and check the workspace units make sure it's set to millimeters and we need to choose a plane to start drawing on so what I want to do is start by modeling the side view of my cup so if the top view is normally what we would consider the bottom surface. I don't want to draw on the bottom, then it would be you know, on its side. So I want to design it straight up and down. So I'm going to be designing on either the right or the front face. I'm going to choose the front. So I'm going to click on that face, choose to start a sketch on that. And the first thing I want to do is um, determine a center line. So I'm going to use construction geometry for that and just a regular line. I'm going to start it on the point of origin so it's nice and anchored to a point in my drawing. So I'm going to click here and I want this to be vertical. So the measurement at this point doesn't matter, we're just sketching. So that's about 70 millimeters. You can press escape to get out of the line tool now I want to just hide the rest of the planes. So these are the default planes. So I'm going to just hide these so they don't interfere with my drawing here. And then I want to view this straight on. So I'm going to click on the front to line it up there. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now I'm going to add a dimension to this construction line. Let's go this way. So let's say I want this to be an even 100 millimeters. All right, so this is gonna be a very basic sketch. Um, the next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is create your own in that, in that situation. You can create something much more complex if you want to challenge yourself in that way. But for today, we're gonna to just do a basic shape for a cup here. So we're going to be using all straight lines. So I'm going to click on this to start a line. And I want to anchor this, make it coincident there. And then I'm going to determine this would be the radius of the bottom where the cup meets like a desk or a table or something. So I'm just going to click here. We're just doing a basic outline sketch. It's very basic. And I want this next line to be even with the top. So I'm going to reference that just by hovering over it for a second, getting a dotted line. Then I want it to be constrained vertically, straight up and down, and then horizontally with the top reference point. So I'm looking for those two constrained marks right there. Then I'm going to click to place it right there. I'm done drawing, so I'm going to press escape. Now I'm going to add some dimensions here. So I'm going to go ahead and I already know this dimension because it's the same as this one. Let's go ahead and dimension this here and make it an even 40. And then I need to know how far off the ground this angle stops. So I'm going to click here and then click the bottom line. So right now that's 10.65, let's make that an even 10 millimeters off the ground. All right, now I need to know the distance between this line and the center line. There's two ways you can do this. You can either reference the center line and do a diameter measurement, or you can do the center line and do just the radius. 
So I'll show you the difference. If I click here and then click here and stay within these two lines, I get the radius. If I want to know the distance of the whole thing since I'm creating a cup that has an you know stretches across. So it's a circle basically. So this would give me the diameter. It's just two different ways to measure. So I'm just going to keep this here and let's do an even 50. That's a radius. So from one edge or lip of the cup to the other is going to be 100 millimeters. Now all of my lines are defined so they're all black instead of blue. So if you like to have everything defined, that's your goal, to get all the lines to be black. All right, now we're going to offset these lines to create an inner wall. So right now we have the outer wall modeled. So I'm going to do an offset to create an inner wall. So go ahead. We want to find the one that looks like a minion, the side of a minion's head. This guy right here. You're going to choose which lines you want to offset. So as soon as you click on one, the first thing you want to determine is which direction you want to offset. This would be outside for what I'm drawing. So I'm going to flip this around by clicking on the arrow. Now I'm offsetting inside. I'm going to select multiple lines. So I want all of those to be inset. That creates the inside face of my cup eventually. I'm done selecting lines. So I can press enter. The next thing it wants to know is what, what distance do you want to have offset? So this is the thickness of the wall of the cup. I'm going to leave it at 5 millimeters because I think that's a, a decent amount. So I'm just going to press enter to accept that measurement. If I ever need to, I can change that. I just need to zoom in to see it better. Now we have some openings here at the top and at the bottom that need to be closed in. So I'm going to use the line tool and make these coincident. Same thing here. All right. So now we have a closed region. We're going to use this region to create our basic cup shape. So what we want to do is, if you imagine this, this surface, if you were to revolve it around an axis, it would create a cup. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to revolve this region around this center line. So we're done with the sketch. I'm going to click the check mark. I'm going to use this tool, which is the Revolve tool. I'm going to be creating a new solid, and it's asking for the faces and sketch regions to revolve. I'm going to select this new region that I created. And then the next thing that's in red here, it needs to know the revolve axis. I'm going to click on that, and then click on the line. And just like that, we've created our first part. So I'm going to accept this. This is what I wanted to have happen. So I'm going to click the check mark. And I'm going to rename this part so I know which thing this is. This is the cup. And if I wanted to, I could rename this. Up. Um, we're not going to get too involved in doing multiple revolves, so I'm just going to leave that one revolve one. I know what that is. All right, so from here, what I'd like to do is know I have some dimensions, but I don't know how much liquid this cup can hold. That's a very important thing when you're designing a cup. So how much liquid can this thing hold? So what I want to do is create another solid that's going to represent the liquid that's inside here. The easiest thing to do is just go ahead and reference the top. Even though I probably wouldn't fill this cup all the way to the brim, that will give me the maximum amount 
or volume of water I can possibly fit in here. So what I want to do is create a new sketch. And I'm going to choose the top face of my cup as the plane. That creates a new sketch plane on the face surface of the cup. What I want to do is close in the top with a lid. In order to create a solid inside, it has to have a boundary right here. Right now it's just open to the air. So I need to close it in with a circle. So I'm in my sketch. I want to reference the cup sketch. So I'm going to turn that on so I can see it again. I'm just going to place a circle right on the top of here and extend it to attach to that part of the sketch. So if I ever change the sketch geometry, the inside solid will change as well as the outside solid of the cup. So I'm going to click on the circle tool, click on the end point of my construction line, which would be the center of my cup. Click there to start my circle, and then go out and attach it to this point so it's coincident with my drawing for the cup. So now I've closed in that space. I have a region there that I can use. So the next thing that I want to do is combine some surfaces to make a new solid. I'm going to accept this sketch. So let's rename this so I don't get confused. So let's name this the cup lid surface. You name it, whatever you want. All right, so now the tool that we need to use is found right here, I think. Nope. Yes. Where the thicken tool is, we're going to use the enclose option. If you scroll over, it says select faces, surfaces, or parts that enclose a region to create a new part. A part is a solid. So we're going to click on this, and we need to select the different faces or regions that create this solid. So I'm going to start with the obvious one, which is the lid that I just created. And now I have, whoops, there we go. It automatically selected that one, I think. So now I need to see inside this cup to select other surfaces. But this sketch is in the way. I can't really reference anything in there. So I need to turn this layer off, this lid surface. I'm just going to hide it. Now I can select the inside surfaces. So I need to select this surface, which is this straight cylinder here. Then we have the slanty part right here. Then we have the bottom surface. So when, once you've enclosed a region, there's no openings, it turns this special color and then you know it's going to work. So the keep tools is very important. This is asking you, do you want to keep the object that you reference the surfaces from? That would be our cup. And yes, we do want to keep that. So we're going to keep the cup. And we're going to click the check mark. Now I have a part two. This part is going to be my volume part. The way to determine volume is to check the properties of a solid. So I'm going to select this and then in the lower right hand corner there's a little scale symbol so you can see the mass properties. And click on that and then you have a volume number so this is in millimeters cubed, cubic millimeters. So in, in American, that doesn't mean much of anything. So we need to know how many ounces this is. So we're going to now 
convert this to ounces using the power of chrome. So I want to go from millimeters cubed to ounces. Now I need to plop in the number, which is a very long one, 597665. 597665. 597665. So 597665 equals 20.2 ounces. So now I know how much volume, if I filled it all the way to the brim, I could do 20.2 ounces. So if you're trying to design a cup that can hold you know, 16 to 18 ounces, you need to make sure this is the way that you would um, determine how much vol volume is in that cavity. All right, so I'm done viewing those. You can click the X. All right, now the cool thing about Onshape is this whole thing so far is based on one sketch, the cup sketch. So if I decided I wanted this to be taller, or if I wanted to change something about it, I could just go into this sketch, and let's say I wanted to decrease the size, because I want something more like a maybe a 10 ounce mug. So I'm going to shorten this to 75 millimeters. And then let's say I want this to be a little more squatty. So I'll reduce this to seven. All right, so now I'm going to click the check mark to accept that. And now I've changed not only the cup dimensions, so the solid for the cup has changed, but the inside as well. So let me just click on that and we'll view the volume area. So let's check this, 441249. 441249, enter. So now I've got up to 14, almost 15 ounces. So now this is more like a 12 ounce mug instead of an 18 ounce mug. So now that we have our mug I'm going to go back in and change those again because I want more surface to work with. Change this back to 100. Now I'll go ahead and change this back to 10. Save that. Alright, so the next thing we want to work on is creating a handle for our mug. So we're done with these solids for now. They're just going to get in the way of our sketching, so I'm going to hide them. Especially the volume, you really don't need to see that. Okay, I'm going to hide the cup. Now I'm back to my original sketch. So what I'm going to do is kind of freehand design what I think a nice handle would look like. I'm going to do that on a separate sketch. So I'm going to click on Sketch going to choose the same plane that I was on before for the mug. So that was the front. And now I'm going to make sure that I'm viewing straight on from the top. And now I'm going to get the spline tool, which allows me to kind of freehand curve my own custom design of a handle here. And I'm going to click on the inside. This will just make my life easier later on. I'm going to click on the inside wall. And then just kind of design my own little handle here. When you're done with the spline, you're going to press the escape key to finish. So now I have a spline. So the, the method we're going to use to create this handle is going to be um, creating a shape profile that's going to be, what is that called? I have to go back. 
let's finish this here this thing right here sweep we're gonna sweep a region around a path so we've just created our path and now we need to create a region which is going to be kind of the shape of the handle <clears throat> so I think an oval shape will probably do the best so if I want my shape my oval shape to be perfectly oval I need to find a spot on my handle that is a perpendicular so I want something that's straight up and down vertical so when I draw my oval on it it will be perfectly in line so if I choose a point down here my oval would have to be at an angle to be perpendicular to the line it's hard to draw at an angle so I'm going to choose a spot about right here where my handle is straight up and down I'm going to use construction geometry so I need to go back into my sketch I'm going to use some construction geometry I'm going to click on this click on construction <clears throat> I think right about here it's close enough I'm just going to drag it to where it's horizontal over here the important thing is to have this point this is where I want to attach my oval and I need to draw my oval perpendicular to this so I want to draw it on this surface but at that height so it's right there so I need to create a plane that intersects that point right there now in class what I did and I'll show you in just a minute what I did and it worked but it didn't work for everyone and this what I'm about to show you is, is a better method we're actually going to create a sketch plane so let's do it the right way and then I'll show you the way I did it in class so what I want to do is create a sketch plane that's right on that intersects this point so there's a tool for that I'm going to accept my sketch and what we're looking for is this right here the plane tool so you can create a new construction plane referencing existing planes or geometry so I click on that tool and I need to reveal my planes first of all so what I want to do basically is offset this plane to intersect this because I want to be drawing on in this orientation but to draw down here would not be in the right spot so I need to shift this up here so I'm going to if I knew the distance from here to here I could choose the offset but I'm going to choose a specific plane point instead so I'm going to choose my plane point and then choose the um, the plane that I want to shift up there and just like that I've created a new plane called plane 1 so I, I can draw right at that point my oval so I'm going to accept that plane and my plane is called plane 1 so I'm going to now draw on this plane so I can hide the other planes and I'm going to place my oval right there so I'm going to be using the oval tool so I want to create a sketch and I'm going to be choosing this sketch to I'm going to create on plane 1 so let me just go over that again so I'm creating a sketch it's asking me which plane do I want to sketch on so I have all these choices here I want to choose plane 1 the one that I just created so now my sketch is locked into that plane I can press the P key to hide all the planes that makes my drawing a little bit easier and then I'm going to grab instead of the circle tool the ellipse tool which allows me to create an oval 
I'm going to make it coincident to this spot that I determined was perpendicular to my handle. And I'm going to use some constraints here. I want to make it straight out. So the first measurement is the long side. The second measurement is the short side. It's asking, do I want to accept that? Yes. Do I want to accept the other one? Sure. So now I can I can redimension these. I'm still in the oval tool, the ellipse tool. So I'm just going to press Escape. Now I can select these measurements if I wanted to adjust them to something different. Let's say I want this to be 13 millimeters. And let's do this one in even 7 millimeters. So this is what the shape of my handle is. So now I have a region that I can use along this path to create a handle. That's going to be the next step. So I'm done with this sketch. I'm going to orbit, and zoom out a little bit. So the next thing I need to do is sweep this. So now I'm going to click the sweep button. It's going to ask me for a face or a region to sweep. I'm going to click on that oval that I just created. Then I'm going to click on the red part and choose the sweep path, which is my spline. And just like that, I've created a handle. Now what you want is for your handle to penetrate through the outer edge of your cup. If it doesn't, there might be a little gap here, and that's not a good thing. So you need to redesign it to where it goes all the way through that outer surface. You can eliminate the... So this is attached to a specific spline. Let's see if we can find that. Um, let's accept this, first of all. Let's go into... Let's see, where's our spline at? Sketch 1. So I change this. Right now it's coincident to this line. So I need to change that if I want to change. So I can click on this and delete it. I click on this, delete it. Now I can click on the line and actually, whoops, should be able to move it. Well, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can transform it. There is a way to do it. I've done it before, but right now we're just going to move on. So if that's you, you might need to redraw the spline. Or if you can figure out how to reposition the point on the spline, you could do it that way. But bottom line is you want the handle to go all the way through the side wall there. All right, so I've shown you the acceptable way to do it. Here's maybe an easier way, but it doesn't always work. So I'm just going to hide this part. I'm going to go back to uh, drawing. I'm going to sketch and I'm going to reveal my planes here. And what I want to do is select this bottom plane. as my drawing surface. And then I'm going to draw just a simple circle to show the example here. So let's say I want my handle to be circular instead of oval. I still need to get this circle somehow up here in, in order to sweep it. So what we did in class is we moved it. It was a two-step process. So I'm going to escape out of the circle tool because that's still on. 
and then I'm going to select the center point and make that coincident with this point here. It's going to shift it in line but it'll still be on that front or the top plane the one that I was drawing on. So I need to somehow get this up here. So what I need to do is select the center point and I want to click on this little button here. I want to connect this to this point up here. And just like that it works. So that was the way that we the method we used in class and it worked for most people but it didn't work for everyone and it's not the best way to do that so I recommend that you create a custom plane just like we did the first time and then draw on that plane to create your the shape for your handle All right, I'm going to undo that and then get rid of this sketch so let's see what we have so far. We've got a cup, we've got a volume, and we have part three, which is our handle. So I'm going to rename that handle. All right, so I'm going to turn off the volume because we don't really need to see that. What we have now is some extra stuff here that's hanging off in the inside. So the next thing I want to do is get rid of that. So what I need to do is somehow slice this handle solid to cut off these extra bits. So we're going to be using this tool here. It's called Split. Click on that. It's asking for the part or surfaces to split. I want to split the handle. So I'm going to click that and then it's asking what entity are you going to use to split it. So I'm going to click that and I want to use the inner surface of this solid. So the face of Revolve 1. I want to keep the tools and what I'm cutting is a part not a face so everything looks great. We're going to click the check mark. Notice I have two new handles. These are the split off parts. So I'm going to hide one at a time to see which ones are the extra parts. So let's hide this one. So that's the actual handle. I want to keep that one. So this is the upper part that's getting cut off. That means this is probably the lower part. Yep. So you could either just hide these. They're just separate parts in here. Or you could just you can delete them. If you're pretty satisfied with your thing, just press delete check the check mark press delete for the other part check the check mark now we're left with a cup and a handle so these are actually two different parts if we wanted to print this we would need this to be all one part because you can only export one part so I'm going to combine these two, but I actually want to keep the originals just in case I need to change some dimensions. So I'm going to copy these. Um, I might have to copy them one at a time. Let's copy the handle. Copy. Check mark. name this handle copy and then I'm going to do the same thing deselect the handle 
select the cup, right click it, copy, check mark. Now I have a part five. This is my cup copy, so I'll rename this. And what I want to do now is just merge these two together into one part. So that's a Boolean function. So I'm going to shift, hold the shift key down, select both of them, right click, choose Boolean. So I want to union these two together. It's already assuming I want to do that. It's already combined them into one thing. So I'm going to click the check mark. So what I'm seeing right here, this little check means that there's two solids that are basically overlapped. So it's showing you two different colors. So I just need to hide these two originals so I can just see my, cu my cup copy. So this then would be my cup to print. So your assignment is to do this project but create your own custom design. So going through the same steps that we went through but you're creating a, a custom cup. So you could have a cup that has you know, more facets to it, some more straight lines, or it could have curve to it. And your cup needs to have a handle and of course the cup part. And I don't want you to try to make the biggest cup in the world because we don't have that much plastic to print with and it'll take hours to print. So just make something that you uh, can call your own and maybe use in the future. That's it for this project.